Good evening. As everyone signs on for this evening's Toast to the Semester, we will begin with a video compiled by the Brass Ensemble of Little Drummer Boy. Bravo. That was our brass ensemble. What a fantastic introduction to our toast to a virtual season. Um, and good evening, everybody. It's wonderful to see everybody. Um, I wish the, the volume had been a little better. I'm sure that leaves us all just wanting more, which is fantastic. Um, I, I'm Alex Gittens. I'm chair of uh, the NYS board. And it's just, it's my pleasure to welcome you tonight and to see everybody's faces. It's fantastic. Um, before we get started, uh, I'd like to just ask everybody remain muted during the musical performances, but please use the chat throughout the evening. Um, it's our celebration uh, uh, tonight of what happens when individuals bring their talents together to a collective goal. And uh, from the inspiration and hard work of our conductors, the organization and coordination of our executive director, Sarah Watkins, the encouragement and, and support uh, that all of you parents are, have been tirelessly giving, um, the technical skills and attention of our sectional coaches, and of course, the effort and heart and commitment of our young musicians. I, I'm just so appreciative of all of these contributions that bring us together tonight for this fabulous program. Um, so with that, I'm not going to talk much more, uh, but just welcome. and. Um, grab a, a, a beverage or just sit back and relax and enjoy. And I'm going to pass the mic to Russell Gurr, our conductor of Concert Orchestra, to lead us throughout tonight's program. Welcome, everybody. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Alex. So I've been designated Jew-in-Chief for some reason. 
Um, and so I'm here to talk to you about Hanukkah for a second. Quick recap of the Hanukkah story, which I had to research because I remember the dreidel and then that's about it. 2000 years ago, a guy named Antiochus annexes Israel to his kingdom and in so doing forbids the practice of Judaism in the Holy Land. At the same time, he goes into the temple, sacks it and installs an idol of Zeus, which is a particularly stinging insult to the Jewish people because idol worship is strictly forbidden. The Jews eventually form themselves into a small guerrilla band, not, not a band band, a small guerrilla army, which then um, retakes the temple, eventually uh, kicks out Antiochus and his crew um, and reinstates the temple. When they're cleaning it out, they have to reignite the eternal flame, but they've only got a small jug that has been sanctified of the oil that keeps it lit. Um, the miracle of Hanukkah is that even though they've only got enough to last for one day, it miraculously lasts for eight until they can get a new uh, shipment. Um, Amazon Prime wasn't in operation. It was the holidays. They were very flooded that year. So um, they then, the, so that's one of the things that Jews do because Jews like to eat is there's a food that you associate with Hanukkah. And so we eat dried foods. So one of the foods is latkes, one of the other foods in Israel, they call it sufganiyot. You people know it as jelly donuts, fried jelly donuts. Reminds me of an old joke, you know. Um, there were two Jewish cannibals sitting around a campfire eating dinner. And the one turns to the other and he says, you know what? I really don't like my mother-in-law. And he says, fine, so then just eat the noodles. Um, but the other thing that reminds me about Hanukkah, there's another joke because, you know, what's amazing to me, Jews have never distinguished themselves particularly physically. So the fact that a group of like guerrilla, you know, army people could outdo the Greek army is, is also interesting. That reminds me of another joke, which is that um, Yeshiva University starts a rowing team. They're like, you know, the ultra Orthodox uh, Jewish university, they start a rowing team and they lose race after race after race. And eventually the captain says, you know what? I'm gonna go up to Boston where they really know what they're doing. And I'm gonna watch them and see how they row crew. So he goes up and he watches and he sees how the guys at Harvard do it. And he comes back and the kids say, no, so what did you learn? He said, there's only one difference between what they do and what we do. I said, what is it? He said, up there, they've got one guy yelling instructions and eight guys doing the rowing. So um, that's the, uh, humor portion of the evening. I'm now just going to give a very quick musical bit, which is that this is the tune that, like, the big most famous tune is. And I'm now going to play it um, in something that sounds slightly more familiar to you. organ because in fact it is not a Jewish tune it is a German tune and in fact it was used by Martin Luther so the Jews are not only a band of guerrillas they're also thieves I can say it I am one um and that's my bit for the evening thanks very much tip your waiters and try the veal um I, I don't have as uh I don't have my uh set prepared like Russell did that was fantastic um, uh, so it's great to see so many familiar faces, um, especially in these times where we're, uh, you know, more indoors than ever. Um, uh, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing some wonderful uh, string players that work with the organization, two of our conductors and also two of our coaches. Um, they're going to put, they put together a, a version of Joy to the World using, um, I think it's an app called Acapella which is one of the apps some coaches use to work with your um, children on their chamber groups, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, let's give a big round of applause using all these fun Zoom emojis um, to four of our wonderful coaches and conductors playing Joy to the World.
Terry. That was amazing, guys. Um, I'm still wondering how I'm supposed to follow Russell, but that was really gorgeous. Thank you so much for sharing that. The one little pertinent I will, thing I will say, not being chief Jew, but still being Jewish, my grandfather was actually supposed to be inducted into the Jewish Sports Hall of Fame, which those of you who know me well will find even that much more shocking. <laughs> he was all, I want to say all Big Ten basketball player um, back when, this is how ancient it was, back when the University of Chicago was a member of the Big Ten. For those of you who know the UFC now, I don't think they could even put together a basketball team, <laughs> much less a basketball team that played for the Big Ten. That was back when basketball games routinely had scores like 10 to 8. Anyway, um, I am not going to talk about anything Jewish, actually. I'm going to talk about just some of the other musical delights, some of the musical traditions we, we normally share uh, around the holidays. Um, I actually, one of my fondest memories growing up was doing the do-it-yourself Messiah when I was in Chicago and going with my dad and singing that glorious music. Something else that I've always loved is, is the Nutcracker. I'm sure many of you have been to the Nutcracker. Maybe you associate it primarily with running those sixth graders running all around the stage. What I'm here to tell you, and indulge me for a moment when you're gonna start wondering, why is he talking so much about the Nutcracker? Um, is it is a work of genius. That piece is genius. There, you to find a work of that quality, ballet music of that quality, you have to look easily four centuries earlier, back to somebody like Lully, who's the court composer for uh, Louis XIV. There is simply no ballet music, by the way. This is Norman who's trying to get involved in this in this conversation. Um, but Tchaikovsky loved dance so deeply so deeply and loved French music, which were the only people who were really good at ballet, that he wrote all these ballet scores that had incredible impact, that were incredibly inspiring, that live with us today still. Sleeping Beauty, Swan Lake, and of course, The Nutcracker. The thing about The Nutcracker is though, it was almost not completed. Our absolute favorite ballet score almost didn't make it because frankly, Tchaikovsky didn't like the story. Because if you know anything about the story of the Nutcracker, it's actually kind of dumb, right? A Nutcracker comes to life and then nothing happens in the second act, nothing at all. They just all dance around. But here's what happens in Tchaikovsky's life. And my apologies, this is a little bit, a little bit dark for what we're discussing. His sister dies. And as he's on a trip to America, right when it happens, He's forced, he reflects back on his life with his sister and it puts him in this nostalgic frame of reference. And out of that, he creates this pay on to childhood innocence. And that, out of that comes the beauty of the Nutcracker. And isn't that something? Um, and you can actually see it all over the score. The pa de de, ba, ba, dee, da, dee, da, 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 da. It's a funeral rite rhythm out of the Russian Orthodox Church. Um, it's my dog. Um, the Arabian dance. Is actually a Georgian lullaby for, um, for sick children. And yet it is as inspired and as joyous as anything is, as often as the case for music that emerges from trauma. So out of that, I wish you all a very, very happy holidays. We will, we miss you all in person. We cannot wait to see you in person and for next semester. Thank you all. And now I will pass it on to whoever is next. Jonathan, you're going to introduce your trio. I am going to introduce my trio. We have something amazing to share with you now. Um, so we're really proud. One of the reasons Russell and I spoke um, as long as we did about specific pieces of music is we are so proud of the adult appreciation classes we've been doing this semester where we dive into works like The Nutcracker and Hanukkah songs. Um, something else that we're all really proud of is the small ensemble work we've been doing. A number of us have been coaching here. Darwin has been coaching, Raphael has been coaching, Sigrid has been coaching, Russell has been coaching. Um, one of my groups tonight we are gonna share, I be, believe a little two minute excerpt of the end of the first movement of Mendelssohn D minor trio. He was a Jew too. Forget the fact that he converted. Um, and 
This is Joy Shu on piano, um, Noah Dorfman on cello, Ava Cho on violin. Um, please enjoy. Thank you very much. Sorry, I was enjoying that so much. <laughs> what a great pleasure. And, you know, it just uh, it gives us a taste of what we can look forward to um, um, more video productions from our different ensembles and orchestras. Uh, so we are um, just, I am just so excited. And uh, it makes me excited for our January seminars and our spring season. Um, and if you're looking for last minute gifts, uh, our seminars or music appreciation classes or a small donation uh, in this season of giving can be done on our website. So I encourage you to do that. I'd also like to thank the members of our special events committee tonight, Heidi Myers, uh, Yasna Dolgov and Sawako Ward for suggesting this evening and our conductors uh, and staff for contributing to this program. Thank you so much. This was just so enjoyable. It was lovely to see everybody as well, um, festive and interested and just seeing everybody's faces in these boxes. It's, it's just fantastic. We have a, such a great community. Um, and so now let's all unmute and raise our glasses of water or wine or coquito or whatever you have um, to a beautiful evening of music and community. Have a safe and healthy holiday. Salud. 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 Happy holidays. Everyone. Holidays, everyone. Cheers. Holidays. Cheers. And as we leave this evening, we have a piece by Darwin Chen, one of our string coaches, uh, with playing with a very accomplished pianist. Thank you. 
Thank you, Darwin. And that concludes our evening. Thank you for joining us and we will see you in the new year. We will have two virtual concerts, uh, one with the uh, videos produced by the small ensembles and one with our orchestra program. So good evening. <laughs>